Hi, everybody. Welcome to Getting Started with Pear Deck. I'm really happy to be with you all today. I know some of you are live with me. I know some of you will probably be catching this as a recording, so I'll try to speak to both angles today, and I appreciate you being here. A little bit about me. My name is Mary Alice Fouts. I am a former elementary school teacher. I taught for 12 years and was in the classroom up until August of 2020. That's when I joined the Pear Deck team. Um, but I taught kindergarten for six years and I taught third grade for six additional years. And I used Pear Deck in my classroom extensively, like all day, every day for about four years straight. So I'm really happy to share everything that Pear Deck can do in your classrooms today. If any of you are on Twitter, you can see my Twitter handle on the slide at MA underscore Pear Deck. I would love for you to follow along and we can stay connected after today's training. And also, if you have questions once we are done today, like after I say goodbye or you're watching this later, you can always reach out to our help desk, help at Pear Deck .com. We have a great team of people there who are very patient, <laughs> a lot more patient than I am, and they will walk you through everything, um, help you troubleshoot if you have any issues that do arise. So that's a little bit about me. Let's see what we're going to get covered today. We're going to learn how to build a Pear Deck lesson. It is a very simple process. It'll take you less than five minutes today. It'll take us a little bit more time because I'll be explaining everything in depth, but it is very simple for you. Then we're going to be taking a look at the different views that Pear Deck has to offer. We have student perspective, of course, and then we have a couple of different teacher views. We will spend a little bit of time in our student pace mode. That's our asynchronous learning option, so you can get a feel for that. And then before we leave today, we'll touch base on teacher settings, where your data saves and stores, how you access all of that again if you need it, and answer any remaining questions that you might have. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. In case you didn't know, Pear Deck lives within your Google Slides. It's actually a Google Slides add-on. And so the first time that you want to use it, you do need to make sure that um, it's installed. So I'm going to exit my present mode here, and I'm going to walk you through the steps to get that add-on added. So if you need to do that, if you've never done that before, you'll just make sure that you're within a Google Slideshow. You'll come to your add-ons drop-down menu and you'll click get add-ons. From here, you'll see the Pear Deck icon, of course. You just click on that and click install, all right? You only have to take care of that step the first time. You never have to do it again. And when you're ready to use it, you will find it back in your add-ons drop-down menu. This time you should see Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on. If for some reason you don't see it and you know you just installed it, just do a quick refresh and it will pop up there. And now you'll be ready to open up your Pear Deck add-on. Now, when I click this button, our sidebar is going to appear to the right-hand side. And this is really where all of the Pear Deck magic happens when you are creating your lessons or your slides. Over here, we have a template library. We have another place you can access additional templates. We have our custom question types, and we also have the ability to add audio directly to your slides. So today we're going to start in the template library. All I have to do is click one time, and now I have access to lots of different templates. We're going to start at the bottom, and we're going to work our way all the way back up. So at the bottom of the template library, we have subject area templates, which span a wide variety here. If you do not see your content area specifically listed here, I'm gonna show you another place that we have even more um, templates living. So you'll probably find something that um, suits your needs there. But I do wanna point out that even if you don't see your subject area here, I always encourage teachers to just click around and explore. And here's why, because all of our templates are 100% editable. You can tweak or modify anything that you see. So even if I'm not teaching social studies, I could very easily use my cause and effect for an ELA lesson. So always, always encourage you to click around and explore. I promise you will not break anything by doing that. Now scrolling back up a little bit in our um, template library, we have our learning development templates. Do not overlook these. They have a lot of value in them. So our critical thinking templates, these are going to follow Bloom's taxonomy, your higher order thinking skills. If you want your students to think more critically about any content that you are teaching, this is the section for you. 
Beneath that, we have social emotional learning templates. Again, equally excellent. And these can be applied to any content area, easily inserted anywhere that you need to. And these templates are gonna help you check in with your students, see what's going on, show them that you care. There's even some active listening um, that goes on down here as one of the templates. So lots of different ways that you can um, support social emotional learning in your classroom. And then at the very top, we have our lesson builders. So we have beginning, during, and end of lesson templates. Beginning of lesson templates are gonna work well at the beginning of your lesson. They're gonna be great for APKs or bell ringers. During lesson activities, end of lessons, great exit tickets, having your students reflect upon your learning. And then right here, this little blue button, this, if you click on it, is going to launch you to our orchard. And this is gonna have even more template examples. So here we can click see all templates. This is where we have every template pack that we've ever released. And you'll be able to preview most of those with the slides. And then down at the very, very, very bottom, here are all of our additional templates. So here you're gonna find things for, um, um, arts, the related arts, couldn't think of that word this morning, related arts, you're going to have things like brain breaks, you're going to have more social emotional support, and even some fun things like um, our uh, seasonal things and our Canva templates. So lots and lots of good things for you to look at down here. Make sure you check those out. Again, to get here, all I did was click this little blue icon and take you into the content library. All right, we've talked about the templates. Let me show you how easy it is to use one of them. I'm gonna click into the beginning of lesson section. And when I find a template that I would like to use, I'm going to click on it one time. And then it will populate a brand new slide in my slideshow. Now I did mention before that anything you see here is editable. You can tweak or modify anything you see. So although I really like this question, it's open-ended, what do you wonder about today's topic? It is a little broad, so I'm gonna make it a little more specific for us. And we're gonna answer this question together in just a few moments. What are you wondering about Pear Deck? Okay, so I could easily change that out. If I wanna switch the font, I can do that. If I wanna remove the thought cloud, if I wanna change the background color, even the artwork, which I happen to always love and adore and don't often switch out, is just layered on as clip art. So you, it's not set in stone. If you have something different in mind, you can always delete, copy and paste anything else in, and then you've got a customizable slide. Today though, I'm gonna bring our artwork back and we are going to shift gears away from our templates. But this is a really, really great place for you to get started if you're wondering, how do I get started with Pear Deck? Check out the template library because you've got quick and easy templates already laid out there for you, and then you can modify anything as you need. So templates, great place to get started, but what about all of those Google Slides that you probably already have? I'm sure you have tons of lessons and tons of content already on Google Slides. So the good news is you don't have to start from scratch with Pear Deck. You can take any of those Google Slides that you have and you can add our interactivity to them. Over here in the sidebar, underneath the template library, we have our custom question types. I'm going to briefly describe them all right now, but we're not gonna spend tons of time on them because I want you to see them and play around with them. You're gonna join me from the student perspective in just a few moments. So you will get a much better understanding of what all of these do. The first one that we have here is our text type. That's where students will have the opportunity to write short response answers. Choice is multiple choice. Number slides, these allow students to only enter numerical values. And when you're taking a look at those on the back end of things, the teacher side, you'll see a range of numbers displayed. The last on the top row is our website tool. This one is really neat. It's going to allow you to embed just about any website on the internet right within your Pear Deck lesson. So if you've already been using, I saw a thumbs up there. If you've already been using um, 
uh, some other tech tools. Maybe you found some other great things in your wheelhouse. You don't have to stop using those. Doesn't have to be either or with Pear Deck. You can now embed those directly in your Pear Deck lesson and Pear Deck really becomes that hub of your learning. So students don't have to go out, come back in, manage lots of different tabs. Did they close it out? Did they leave it open? It's all gonna be in one spot. So some great things that you can embed are Google Forms, Flipgrid, quizzes, um, really the sky is the limit, virtual field trips, all of those things can still be done within Pear Deck. Now, the bottom row, our drawing and draggable tools, these are two of our premium features. So everything I've mentioned before, the templates, the template library, these top four um, question types, those are absolutely free. Anyone can use them. But I'm gonna be speaking to you about our premium features today. And the good news is before you leave today, you're all gonna get access to 90 days premium Pear Deck. So you can try all of these features out that I'm sharing with you. So I'll be sure to speak to what is premium so you know what you're getting extra access to. So drawing and draggable. These are our most versatile question types that we have. You're going to find yourself using these most often, I can venture to say, because they really do just about everything that you want them to do. The drawing tool is gonna to do much more than draw. We're gonna spend a lot of time looking at it from the student perspective when we get joined. The draggables I am gonna click into, it's easy for you to see them on the back end so you can see all the possibilities. Draggables are just icons that you can add to your slides and then students drag them around to show their understanding. It's always gonna to default to this little red dot but if you click the drop down menu, you've got lots of other options. So here's the first set of draggables. We have a whole set of math symbols, a set of numbers. We have people, places, and things. And then last but not least, we have a set of punctuation marks. You can add up to five of these per slide. You can also adjust the size of the draggable according to the content that's on your slide. And if you want to swap out the colors, all you have to do is click that square and you can swap them out. They can all be the same color, all be different colors. You can create answer keys, all those great things like coding, all right? Now, for this particular slide, I'm not going to update it. I'm going to click out of this because I want to do something different here. I have my slide here. It says every student deserves a voice. When we get started, I want you to be able to circle your opinion here. So if that's the case, all I have to do to get this slide ready is click draw one time. That is it. Very easy. <clears throat> You're going to see Perry pop up. He's going to do a little dance. Perry is our Pear Deck mascot. He's really cute. I know. He's also really powerful, so don't let his cute little face fool you. Anytime you see him down here in the bottom left-hand corner, that means you have Pear Deck interactivity on that slide. Now, if this gray foot bar is taking up some of your slide real estate, if you need more room, you can drag it down. Just make sure you don't delete it. If you were to delete that slot, um, that uh, foot bar, it's going to delete the interactivity. And then you're not going to be too happy when you get to your slide. Your, your students are going to tell you they can't do what they need to do. All right. So one last thing down here that I want to show you when you're creating your slides is the ability to add audio. So this is a premium feature. If you click that button, you can now have the opportunity to record yourself live. You can even upload and install audio as needed. So if you already have um, something that's on your device and you need to upload that, maybe it's a song, maybe it's a famous speech, you have access to do that. You can also record yourself live. I'll just show you that really quickly. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so I can resume, I can keep recording if I need to, I can delete and start over, I can save with done. And you will be able to tell if you're trying to do um, any sort of support here where you need to do a read aloud for the text on the slide, you'll be able to see that on the slide so that you can record that very easily. And something I wanna show you, I don't show everybody this, so you're really special, is you can download your audio. So if you know that you're gonna be using the same set of directions on multiple slides, if you click that three dot menu after you record, you can download that and then you've saved yourself some time on the future slides, okay? So we've got everything here. I'm gonna save that audio to the slide. We're gonna add it. Take a look in the upper right corner. You're gonna see a little box appear telling me that my audio has been added. 
um, and we'll explore what that looks like on the student side in just a second because we're getting ready to get started. All right. So, so far we've looked at our template library, we looked at our custom question types, we even added some audio, and let's pretend that you've done that too, that you're preparing your lesson, and now it's done. You're ready to start it with your class. When you are, you will click the start lesson button at the top of the sidebar. All right, that's important. You do not want to be tempted to click the white slideshow present button anymore. If you click that button, you are still going to get regular Google Slides, no interactivity. Instead, you can remember that you want the start lesson button because it is green and green tells you to go. Okay. Once you click that, you have two choices. These are the different ways you can share your lessons out with your students. First way, instructor pace mode. This is where you, the teacher, the instructor, you're in charge, right? You can guide students through the lesson at the rate in which you choose. This is going to be your synchronous learning option, whether your students are face to face with you or at home or any combination of the sort. The other side is our student pace mode. This is where your students are in control of how quickly they are working through the slides. So you do not have to be right there with them. This is your asynchronous learning option. Great part about our modes, you are not stuck in either one of them. You can toggle freely between them. So if you really wanted to combine the two and lots of teachers do, you're able to do that. I'm gonna show you how easy that is to do today because I'm gonna give you some time in student pace mode. We're gonna start an instructor. I'm gonna guide you right along, facilitate, and eventually I'm gonna switch it over and let you play for a minute, okay? So I am getting ready to click instructor pace. I'm gonna launch my lesson. And when I do, a lot of things are gonna change on my screen. I promise to you, I will explain all of those things, um, but it's gonna look a little bit different. So here we go. What's happening is my Google slideshow is transforming into a Pear Deck session. And this is not the one I wanted to log in with. So let's see if I'm gonna have a little issue behind the scenes here. Let me get logged in. We're just going to do it through that email and keep our fingers crossed. I think we're working. All right. So um, my Google slideshow is transforming into a Pear Deck session. There we go. Now, I have this extra window that just popped up. This is called our teacher dashboard. It's very important. But for the beginning, it goes behind the scenes. And we'll talk about it in depth in just a bit. Let's talk about what you can see now. I see this big gray box with Perry in it. Okay, so that's a good indication that you did start your lesson the right way. Anytime you see him, you're good to go. What happened here is um, I launched my lesson. So in order for my students to join that, they have a couple of different ways that you can have them join. First way is by going to joinpd.com and entering the six letters. This is a unique join code. It will be different every single time you start a lesson. The website is always the same. It can be bookmarked. It can be used on any type of device. So Pear Deck is web-based for your students. There is no app. It's gonna work on a Chromebook, an iPad, a smartphone. It's gonna work on any sort of laptop or desktop. Okay, so you don't have to worry about what sort of device your students are using. And then they can enter these letters. That works really well if your students are face-to-face -face with you live, right? But if they're not, <laughs> like today, What's an easier way, okay? So down here underneath Perry, you have the option to give students a link. If I click on that, I can paste that anywhere. It's automatically copied. So I just dropped it in the chat and I'm inviting you all to click and join that so you can be a part of the lesson from the student perspective today. This is where all of the engagement is gonna go. I can see April is joined. I'm also going to join. So if you'll give me just a second. For those of you that might be watching the recording, I am joining as a student as well, and I'll be toggling back and forth so that you can see both perspectives. Let me hop back to my teacher side. Something neat to point out here, we also have integration with Google Classroom. So if you wanted to push that straight to your classroom, you could do that. And in the left-hand corner, we have the number of students who have joined. So that's good to know, right? It's good to know if everybody's joined or not, if you need to give more wait time or if you're all good to go. So it looks like we have just about everybody joined. If you haven't joined yet and you would like to, watch what happens when I press continue. That join code always lives in the upper right-hand corner. 
And I'm telling you from personal experience, when I taught third grade, even the students that I had that came in late to class, let's say they were with a resource teacher and had to come in and just go with the flow when I, wherever I am in my lesson, they were able to do that. They know joinpd.com, they enter those letters in the upper right hand corner, and then I just get to keep teaching. I'm not interrupted at all, and we're rocking and rolling. All right, bottom left hand corner now, we have arrows. Everybody knows what arrows do, they toggle through slides. The difference is with Pear Deck, I'm in control of what you're seeing on your side of things. You cannot go anywhere as a student until I take you there. So when I click this arrow now, watch your computer. If you're looking at your student tab, you're going to see it change with me. All right. So now on your student side, I'm going to switch gears here. Student side, here's the question. Here's our text question type. So go ahead and type in here today. What are you wondering about Pear Deck? What are you hoping that I get covered today? Do you have anything that you want to make sure that you know about Pear Deck before you leave today? If you don't have any questions, you can just type hi, good morning, or something so that we have a little bit more data to work with in our um, teacher side of things. All of this um, typing that you're doing is live on my side of things. I can see it coming in behind the scenes. There's no save button. There's no enter. There's no submit for students. Everything lives in real time. So as you're typing, I'm going to switch back over to my teacher side. Right now, I'm just sharing out the question type with you, but I want to share out those responses that you're giving me. So if I look down here to the right hand corner, I have a show responses icon. Clicking on that is going to reveal everything in real time. Okay. <laughs> I love the first response. I wonder why more people aren't watching this great demonstration. Well, hopefully they are watching it on repeat on the recording and there are a couple of other sessions today. So maybe they're picking a different time slot that works for them, but I'm so glad you're enjoying it already. And um, here we say, I'm good, love, love Pear Deck. I think I'm going to start using it for my Tech Fit mini series. I love to hear that. All right, so it doesn't look like we have any questions, but if you have them later on, you can drop them in the chat. We do have someone that is monitoring the chat specifically and we'll be happy to um, address those if I don't see them come in live, okay? Somebody loves, wants to learn more about Immersive Reader. Good to know, I am gonna share that with you today. All right, let's move forward. How much do you already know about Pear Deck? This particular question type, here's the student side, is multiple choice. So um, go ahead and pick one of those options. There's no right or wrong answer here. And as a matter of fact, Pear Deck does not code right or wrong answers. There's no way that you're going to indicate that behind the scenes. And we'll talk about why that is in just a moment. So I'm gonna pick one here myself. Let's go back to the teacher side of things. I'm gonna show those responses again. They're gonna look a little bit different this time. This time I have a beautiful bar graph. I call it beautiful because this is real-time data. This is your formative assessment piece at your fingertips, okay? So we talked about just a second ago that there's no way to mark a right or wrong answer in Pear Deck, and that's because Pear Deck was designed by teachers for teachers specifically as a formative assessment piece so that you can guide your lessons while you're in them. Um, this particular question type, the multiple choice, also functions really well as a polling mechanism in your class. So you can think of some creative ways to use that. But also, if I have a right or wrong answer, and I know that in my mind as the teacher, I'm able to guide my lesson. If I know that A was the right answer and nobody picked it, I'm in trouble as a teacher, right? I probably need to stop and reteach that content. Or if um, B, C, and D were all correct answers, now I can have a classroom conversation. I can facilitate that collaboration, that classroom discussion, and know, well, why do you think B is correct versus D versus C? Maybe they all are, and extend that conversation that way. All right, so that was multiple choice. Let's move on. This is our drawing tool, okay? We're gonna talk about everything that it can do in just a second, but I'm gonna switch back over to the student side. I do wanna point out that I recorded audio on this slide as a little demonstration. So you should see that white uh, text box in the upper right-hand corner telling me that the audio has been included. It's gonna give you a little reminder though that you need to look down for the headphones this is where students will access the audio to play it. So anytime you record, they will click the headphones at the bottom right-hand corner. 
Now, all these really great drawing tool features. We have our pencil, our highlighter, our straight line, text, and eraser, lots of colors, as of course you can see. And above this pencil, we have a sizer. This will change the size of anything that the student is adding to the slide, including the size of the text if they have it written. So pencil is the easiest way for students to draw. So if you're working with littles, okay, and maybe they can't write their thoughts out, or you're working with students who might have some learning disabilities and aren't able to write their thoughts completely out too, you can always give them the opportunity to draw, right, to show their understanding. You can even add that additional layer of support with the audio if you need to. Next here, we have our highlighter. Yes, it highlights. Let's think about some ways you can use it. Maybe that's for vocabulary and context. Maybe it's for sight words with your littles. Maybe you have an entire passage here, a paragraph, and you need your students to mark up that passage. You want them to annotate it. Maybe they're finding the main idea in one color and key details in different colors to support that. Really, the sky is the limit with your highlighting and the content you can apply it to. If you need to take that up a step, maybe you teach a little bit older than elementary, you want them to highlight, but you want them to annotate next to that, have them switch over to the T for text. Now they can tell you exactly what they're thinking. They can take notes right there. The text functionality has a lot of other great ways that it can be used to. It's great if a teacher has a graphic organizer already on the slide, they can have students type right in there, fill that in. It's great for filling the blank for vocabulary. It's great for labeling. So lots of different ways that it can be used. It's also really good for our math teachers. If you teach math, you know that it's really important for students to show their work, to show their understanding, to show their thinking. The easiest way to do that within Pear Deck is on a drawing slide. And typically, depending on what kind of device your students are using, it is faster for them to type. So if they were typing an equation, but let's say they came to a math symbol, they don't have it in the keyboard. They're not all there, are they? So what we can do is switch over to the pencil and students can then draw in that symbol. Really, really easy workaround. Um, my third graders taught me that a long time ago. So if they can do it, I know your students will be just fine too. All right, last but certainly not least down here, we have our straight line feature. Of course, that works well for underlining, but, but think of all the different geometry applications it can have. If you're teaching any sort of polygons or angles or graphing line plots, it's gonna function well for that. And another thing that I feel like it's underutilized for is matching concepts. So um, within Pear Deck, we don't have a drag and drop option. We have our draggables, but you wouldn't, a student wouldn't be able to match a term to a definition by dragging. That's one of the great parts about Pear Deck though, actually, is it's more like a PDF copy of your slides. So your students can't start to move things around that shouldn't be moved. So if you still want them to match something up in that manner, you can put the concepts on either side or above and below on the slide, and then they can use the straight line option to match up those concepts. So if it is a word to a definition or anything you're wanting to match up, they would be able to do it in that way. All right, I've done a lot of talking about the drawing slide because it is extremely versatile. So hopefully I spoke to at least one way you can think about using the drawing slide with your particular group of students in your content areas. If you haven't done so already, I would love for you to go ahead and circle your opinion here on this slide. If you've already circled your opinion, doodle, play around, have some fun for a second. I'm gonna switch back over to the teacher view. I'm going to share those out again at the bottom. And as you're doodling and playing a bit, I want to draw your attention to the upper left hand corner here. These are the different ways I can display my student responses to my class. So the first way is list view. It's going to list out everybody nice and big separately. Next, we have grid view. Of course, everything's laid out in a grid, so I can see a lot more at one time, still individual student responses. And then we have one more view and you're really gonna like this one on certain slides. Now, this one doesn't lend itself super well because we've doodled. I think I'm the only one that really doodled, but I'm gonna tell you, this is a great time saver for you. This is our overlay view. What this will do is it will take all of your student slides. It's gonna layer them on top of one another. And then you are able to see what the whole class is thinking with one click of the button. It's a huge time saver. So take a look. 
I've got more doodles than everybody else, but I can still very easily tell we're on the agree side. So think about how you can use this in your classrooms, right? It's really um, a great way to facilitate more classroom conversation. Class, why do you think we all agreed or why did we all pick that? Um, but it's also a great way to identify who's not getting it, right? If this was a distinct question that had right or wrong options, I'm able to see who's getting it, who's sticking out over here, who's that sore thumb, who do I need to support even more, right? And I've figured that out very, very quickly. So we like the drawing tool. We're going to see it again on the next slide. I've got a follow-up question to this. We think that every student deserves a voice. How about this one? Every student is heard. So I'm going to switch back over. Same tools here. Um, it is a scale. This is a template. If you like this sort of uh, slide, you have access to that. If you don't completely agree or disagree, feel free to go anywhere in between that you might like. And I want you to work there. Okay, go ahead and start putting your opinions. If you are not live with us, what I'm getting ready to do, um, everybody live is going to see on their side instantly, but I'll show you in just a second. So I want you to keep working. I'm going to do something a little unexpected here. If you joined as a student, keep an eye on that side. It's going to happen right about now. All right. If you weren't live, here's what just happened. I just locked the students' screens. So if I need them to stop working and put all eyes on the board, if I need them to stop working because I can realize that my class is already going in a direction with answers that's not right and I need to stop and reteach, I can do that. Okay, so let me show you where that button was. This time I want everybody to make sure you're looking at the Zoom call side of things. That button lives right next to show response, the lock screen. I can lock and unlock as much as my heart desires. I can also click and hold here and something hides. I have a timer, 30 seconds, one minute and three minute options. This allows you to build in your wait time, okay? And I just heard this week from an educator of an interesting way that they have been using their timer. They actually use it for think time instead of work time to build in that time to process. So you could say, initially, we're gonna have 30 seconds just to think, no working yet. When the timer runs out, I can set it again if I need to. So we don't have custom timers, but you can customize how long the timer runs. If 30 seconds is not enough time, you can reset it. If three minutes is too much time, you can always lock it in advance. The timer lives on the teacher side and the student side. So students know exactly how much time they have left, even if they're not sitting right there in your classroom. And when that timer gets down to zero, it's gonna lock in the answers. Another great feature, uh, excuse me, another great way to use this feature is if you want to lock in results, lock in students thinking before you share them out, that would prevent them from shifting their answers when they see everybody else's and give you a really accurate description of what's going on. It's also um, a great idea to lock it if you don't want your students to continue to doodle and play around when you're already discussing the content, okay? So for this one, every student is heard. We're kind of all over the place here, some in the middle, some agreeing, and that is ideally what we would like to happen in every classroom, right? Teachers, we have really good intentions of hoping that every student voice is heard in our classroom. Realistically, though, does that always happen? Do we always hear from everybody every day, every question, every time? Probably not, not unless you're using something like this. So let's go back to the first question. It's really easy to tell here. You probably already noticed if you're watching this recording, you may have really noticed that there are no names here. There are no names that I'm sharing out with you as my students today. Pear Deck has students responding anonymously. That is super important and super powerful. That levels the playing field for all students in your class to have a safe place to share their voice. So you will find that you're hearing from those shy and timid students. You will find that you are hearing from maybe your students who speak two, three, four languages and don't feel comfortable speaking aloud. You'll even still hear from the ones that raise their hand all the time, right? Now you're hearing from everyone because you've created that safe learning environment where all of your students have a voice and are engaged every single day. So that's really good, right? I know. But what about you? 
you need names. I know you need names because you want to support your students. And so this is where our teacher dashboard comes in. So before I drag it back in, it came made a little appearance at the beginning. I do want to show you this slide that helps you wrap your brain around all the different views that we have at Pear Deck. So I'm going to explain this quickly and briefly, and then I'll drag in the dashboard so you can see it. So first view at the bottom, that is the student view. When students are joined to the Pear Deck lesson on their device, that's the student view. Second view is called our projector view. Projector view gets its name because this is what you would be projecting in front of your classroom for all your students to look at. So that could be your smart board, your smart TV, even your whiteboard, whatever you're sharing responses on in front of the room. And that is where everything is anonymous. Students would look to the front of the room to see everybody's responses. This also works virtually as well. So if you were projector view virtually, it's going to look like what I'm sharing out right now. It's what I've been sharing out all morning. Now, the third view you can see in the teacher's hand, that is our teacher dashboard view. Teacher dashboard view is behind the scenes. This is where all of those names are saved and stored. The dashboard is a premium feature and it's got some extra um, functionality on it that I'm gonna share with you. Okay, so I'm gonna pull in the dashboard. It's going to look very similar to the projector view with a few key differences. So I'm going to layer these views here today and let's go back to this view, okay, this question type. Now, um, I got my dashboard open when it was starting, right, but maybe yours didn't prompt you to do that. Maybe you closed it out by accident and you're not sure how to get it back. You can always click the three dot menu down on your projector view and it's going to give you the option to open your dashboard in a new window or a new device. If you wanna open it on a new device, that could be your iPad, your tablet, your smartphone. You can definitely do that. The best and fastest way to get there, I'm gonna put in the chat right now, is paradeck.com forward slash dash, okay? Very, very simple. So once you have your dashboard open, it's going to look like this. In the background, I've got my projector view layered so we can compare. So projector view is anonymous. It's what I share with my students. In the foreground, this is my dashboard view. This is where all of my student names are. You can see them now in blue, okay? Those blue names get there by your students logging in to verify their Google credentials. That's how the names get there. Some other key things you're gonna see on the dashboard. We have a star. The star allows you to highlight a few great responses, okay? If you wanna showcase anything, you can pull just those students into the conversation. I can clear the stars off and bring everybody back if I need to. I can also hide any inappropriate responses. So if I wrote something that I shouldn't have, I know I'm pretending myself, if I wrote something inappropriate or drew something inappropriate, I can just click that three dot menu and I can hide that response. So take a look back here, it's gonna disappear really, really quickly. Now, your students are not ever gonna see it though. Right now I'm sharing out the responses, but if you were doing this, your students would only see the question type because they're working right away. If they happen to look up, they'll still see this. You behind the scenes, uh, either on your separate device or your separate window, you're looking at all the responses coming in real time. So you can identify if there's anything that can't be shared out. Let's say that that student makes a better choice. You need to bring them back. They're not gone forever. You can click the three dot menu again, show the response, and they're right back into the conversation. You also have the ability to leave feedback for students. So if I click this comment bubble, I can leave feedback, great job, whatever the case might be. And when I send that, it's gonna look like this. I left it on my own so you can all see. In the bottom right-hand corner, when a student gets a feedback from you, it's going to appear in this comment bubble down here with a little pink, okay? I can click on that as a student. I can read what my teacher wrote me. I can change my response. I can tweak, I can edit, and I can mark that as read. Now, um, for you all to know, the teacher feedback, you can leave that live. You can leave it later. You can leave it if you're in the mode we're in now, instructor pace mode or student pace mode, and it will now be accessible after the lesson ends. So I'll show you how students can get feedback if you've already ended your lesson. 
All right, last thing I'm gonna share with you on the dashboard is really important for you to know. Within the dashboard three dot menu, right down here, we have the ability to invite a co-teacher. So if you're co-teaching, yay, you get to share now. It doesn't have to be either or. You just copy that link, send it to whoever you need to share with. Now you both have access. When the co-teacher clicks that link, they're going to have a dashboard that pops up on their screen as well. So the only key thing here is if you are co-teaching, both teachers need to have premium Pear Deck access, okay? Um, but yeah, anything that I can do, the co-teacher can do. They can toggle through slides, leave feedback, hide responses, show responses. It's a great way to divide and conquer. It's a great way to support all of your students. All right, I know that was a quick rundown of our dashboard. It is gonna go back behind the scenes now, but hopefully it's gonna help you guide and facilitate your lessons. We're gonna touch base on one more thing, and then I'm gonna let you uh, free for a minute and work in student pace mode. So this next thing um, lives only on the student side. It is an awesome feature. So if you did join as a student, look in your bottom right-hand corner. If you're following along from the recording, we're gonna look in my bottom right-hand corner where I see this book and speaker. This little icon is called Immersive Reader. Immersive Reader is going to provide a read aloud of any text you have typed on the slide. So if I click that, I invite you to click it as well. I am able to see those words. And if I press play at the bottom, Pear Deck is on a mission to help to teachers out. deliver. Okay, pretty awesome, right? It's even better than that. Let's look in the upper right-hand corner. Not only does it read aloud, the A here has text preferences. So if I have students that need large print, maybe it's on their IEP, it is built right in. I don't have to do anything extra. They control this. If they need to adjust spacing, changing the font option, even the background color, whatever the student needs to do to make it easier to read. Now, Immersive Reader was specifically designed for students that have visual impairment and dyslexia. So that's why all of these options are over here. And ideally, they would be able to find something that helps them see the content better. But that's not all, there's even more. I always feel like I'm on an infomercial with Immersive Reader. The next option has grammar. So if we are working on syllables, parts of speech, and then last but not least up here, we have our reading preferences. So this has a line focus option. If you have any students who are struggling with ADD, ADHD, how to stay focused, it's great for your littles too, who are still reading word by word and line by line. We have a picture dictionary, also great for littles or any student who's working on building vocabulary. If you click on some of the words, if this is toggled on, that one has one. Yep. It's going to have a visual representation. So now I have a picture as a student to help me understand what that word means. And at the very bottom of the book, we have a translate button. There are over 80 different languages here at last count. All you have to do is click one of those. And let me get to one that's going to do read aloud. Okay. And if I toggle document as well, take a look at my words. Boom. One click of the button. It's translated, and now if I press play, Perdec tiene la misión de ayudar a los maestros a ofrecer poderoso. So neat. It is a huge game changer for your students who need it, right? Because it does so much. And the best part about Immersive Reader, I think, for the teacher side of things anyway, is that it's no extra work for you. You just make sure it's turned on. I'm going to show you how to do that before we leave today. And then the students pick their preferences. They know what works best for them anyway, right? You might want to give them a little lay of the land, a little demo like I gave you. You know your students best. And then those preferences, they save from slide to slide to slide. They do not have to set them up every time. So it's very easy for them to use as well. All right. I have done tons of talking. It's time to play. So we're going to head down here to... Our student pace mode. I'm gonna show you <clears throat> from the teacher side how easy it is to toggle back and forth between the modes. And I'm gonna let you play for just a minute. So in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm gonna click my three dot menu. I'm gonna click turn on student paste. Carrie's gonna pop up. He's gonna say, are you really sure you wanna do that? Yes, I do, okay? Now look at the student side, here's mine. In your bottom left-hand corner, you should have arrows that were not there before. They weren't there before because I was in control. They are there now because you are in control. So 
take a moment. I'm going to put on a little bit of music here so you don't have to listen to me breathe. And we're just going to take a minute or two to work through the next set of slides. You will know when to stop because you'll see a big giant stop sign, but you can go past it if you would like. And we'll come back together in just a second. If you didn't join or you're watching the recording, I'm going to work through the student side um, so you can follow along. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give us about 30 more seconds. Again, it's okay if you don't make it through all the slides. We're going to touch base on a few of them. All right, I'm going to turn my music down here. And if you are not done, get to a good stopping point. I'm going to come back to my teacher side of things. Right now, um, I do want you to look at my screen. Uh, because I am on the um, student pace mode on the teacher side, it's going to remind me that in the bottom. And then to the right, I have the option to stop that. If I click this button, I pull all of my students back to my current slide, and then I am in control again. Um, you don't have to do that. Your students can end the lesson at their own rate, but you do have the flexibility to go back and forth as much as you need to. So let me get to this slide. I'm gonna bring you to my jelly bean jar here in just a second. All right, you should all be there. This was an example of our number slide. So I'm able to, doesn't look like all my numbers got in there. Okay, here's my estimate. Um, but when I'm looking at that from the teacher side, when I'm showing those responses out, my answers are gonna display in a range. So I, of course, have that great for estimation, but if you were using it for a precise answer, you'd hopefully see your target line form where the correct answer is. You'd be able to really quickly and easily tell if anyone was off target. You saw the draggables in this section. Here was one example, and here was the other. And so let's look at that show response option now. We looked at the draggables behind the scenes before we got started. As a quick reminder, you can add up to five. Of course, the colors are optional to change out, um, and there are a wide variety for you to choose from. You can overlay draggables just like you can your drawing slide, so you're able to see common thinking all at one time. And then last but not least, for question types, here is our website slide. It's nothing fancy from the teacher perspective. All the cool stuff lives on the student side. So here's what it would look like if a website was embedded. This is where our templates live. So you will have extra access to that, as you can see. Um, but the other thing is, this is a great uh, place for you to know that anything that you're embedding will still have the same functionality. So a Google form is gonna live over here, a Google doc, another Google slideshow, um, anything that you need to embed, chances are it's gonna work over here. So you've got some great options there, okay? All right. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to end a session when you are done. And it's really easy. All you do is go to the bottom right hand corner and click end. And from here, I do always recommend that you name it. OK, so we're going to just call this Pear Deck 101. I'm going to do my naming convention of the date. That's going to help me find it later. You'll see that in just a minute. 
I'm going to save an end. All right, from here, I am able to do reflect and review or generate takeaways, or I can share straight to my classroom. So let's talk about a couple of these options. The takeaways I am gonna to generate today. So if you joined me live, you're gonna get an email. You're going to have a copy of those waiting for you as soon as I click it in about 10 minutes, um, or I can open reflect and review. Now reflect and review is going to allow you as the teacher to go in, look at individual student responses by all of that student. So if I wanted to see how I did today, I can click on that student, I can scroll down, I can see all of this student's work and I can leave feedback from here. So just like you can leave feedback from your live lesson, I can leave additional feedback after I've ended the lesson. And I can toggle to the next student if I need to, to leave feedback here great and easy way to navigate. Let's say you as the teacher are done leaving all of your feedback. Here's the great part. When you need to share that feedback with your students, you click copy student link at the top. You have one link. You do not have 20, 25 different links. You have one link. And when you share it with that student, this is what they see they see their individual responses. It's gonna look really, really similar to what they are already familiar with. The bottom right-hand corner, they can even toggle directly to their feedback. Let me go to the side where my feedback is, okay? So really, really easy for them to use and revisit content if you need them to. All right, so let's go to our slides. I'm gonna go ahead and exit that, we'll go back to the slideshow. We're to our last bullet point here where we're gonna explore our teacher settings, all that data that you have. If you have questions that you would like answered before we leave today, go ahead and start dropping those in the chat and we'll take care of them. So your teacher settings and data, that's gonna live at paradeck.com. Paradeck.com is where your teacher accounts will live, okay? So I'm going to log in in the upper right-hand corner. And once I'm here, I'm going to go to my settings first. I wanna be able to show you where to turn on Immersive Reader if you are interested in that. So when we get to our settings, we just click on um, your email address. When you see that crown on your head, that means you have premium Pear Deck access. And Jackie just dropped that uh, 90 day free premium access in the chat. So be sure to click on that. But when I click here, I'm gonna to go to my account and now I'm gonna click settings. So this is where you have some optional things you can turn off or on. The one I do wanna to touch base on today is immersive reader because we talked about that specifically. You just turn it on one time and it will always be on for your students to adjust their needs. All right, last on here, we're gonna to navigate to the upper left-hand corner to our sessions icon. This is where every single Pear Deck session that I've ever started is going to live. That's why your naming convention is very important because if I have the same slides that I'm using over and over with multiple groups of students, I'm gonna need to name that. I need to know what students were in that session. So maybe this is block one, block two, et cetera. And over here, this is where I can revisit the content, okay? This symbol, anytime you see it, is the dashboard view. So I can click on that. I can go back in. I can review work after it has been completed. But I can also click the three dot menu here. And this will take me um, directly to reflect and review. If I've ended my lesson but didn't have time to leave feedback yet, who has time at the very end of class, and I need to do it later, I can access reflect and review just through that three dot menu. I can pull out that and leave my feedback then. Okay. All right. Any questions in the chat? I don't see any thus far. If you have questions and you're watching this back, oh, April has a question. Go ahead. Well, Mary, I can I can ask you after we stop the recording. So I'll let you wrap up and then. If you do have questions and you're not live with us today and you um, are thinking of something that you need, I want to know. I want to show you a couple of resources down here. We have help videos. These are great. They are broken down, really short tutorials, skill based. We have a how to handbook. We have a knowledge base. And if you are watching this um, and it's not live, your best bet is to reach out to help at paradeck.com if you have something really specific that you need um, taken care of, okay? All right, 
Well, again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your time today. I know you're all very busy. I appreciate what you do all day, every day for your students. Don't forget to stay in touch with me on Twitter if you have an account at MA underscore Pear Deck. Thanks, everybody.